when we think about um, all the work we've done, all the work from the day the world was created, and all the Torah mitzvahs, and all the Messiris Nefesh, and all that has been done, it's all about the purification, it was all about the preparation, it was all about making the world ready for the ultimate godly revelation, where Hashem moves in and reveals himself into this world, and he has the fulfillment of his desire of having a dira, a home in this world. Now that process of bringing the Ebrishter and making a dira um involved the collective work of all of humanity and all the work of the Jewish people. Once that's done, and we come time to the final revelation, how does Hashem reveal himself? Hashem reveals himself as the melech of the world, as the king of the world. He channels that leadership through the malchus of Mashiach Tzedkenu, which is the extension of Malchus Beis David. Malchus Beis David is not a private kingdom. It's the kingdom of Hashem himself. And David and Mashiach and all the chain of the of these of these kings they are the transparent conveyors of the Eberster's malchus so as it comes and as the rebbe told us that everything has been done already and we are holding already at the completion of everything and the only thing that is needed that rebbe says is, is a sicha where the rebbe says it in tafshin nun alef parsha shoiftim the words of the rebbe incredible words the rebbe says der minuif in david malka mashiach hashem given that the appointment of david malka mashiach happened already that the only thing and, 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 and the only thing that's still necessary is the Kabbalah Samalchus Adayam, that the people have to accept the, the connection of the Melech and the Yam through the Kabbalah Samalchus, that's through the Yam. And it's basically the same idea like we know by David HaMelech, because by David HaMelech, even though he was appointed by Hashem, he said Hashem sent Shmuel Navi to put the Shem and Amishcha on David HaMelech, but all of that was not sufficient until the Avner Bener went and campaigned across the entire land to bring the Yidden to David HaMelech so that they can make an official coronation. And why is that necessary? Once Hashem appoints a king, why is it necessary? And the answer is because the king is the king over us. Even since, even the Eberster's Malchus, which basically the Malchus based David is the Eberster's Malchus, requires a coronation. It requires our acceptance. That's what we do every Rosh Hashanah. The Eberster says to us, we should blow shoifer, and all of this is kedei shetam luchuni alechem that you should make me king over you. The Eberster is asking of us that we should make him king because he can't be a king on on his own over us because kingship involves two parties, and obviously for the ultimate realization of the Eberster's kingdom through Melech Hamashiach, especially since the Malchus has been interrupted for so many years and it has to be reignited and re. Reawoke, uh, uh, reawakened, it requires the Am to awaken up that Malchus. In Hasidus, it explains that the, the Indian of Malchus by the king is something embedded in his very, very essence, but because it is so essential, it is so deep inside, it requires a very powerful stimulator, and the stimulator can only come from the people. We stimulate it by crying out, long live the king. That's the way it is. It, it is. it is awakened by the Eberster, and that is the way it is awakened by a Melech, including Melech HaMashiach. Right now, this has been given to us now, even though there has been already this koch and this excitement 30 years ago, when the Rebbe said these powerful sikhs, and we were holding at the threshold, literally, of the redemption, and everybody was so excited, and we were doing this Kabbalah Samalchus, various different campaigns, for whatever reason that only the Eberster knows, there had to be a Helen Vahaster, a concealment for, and a, 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 what seems to be a, not, not an interruption, but a concealment on Malchus based on it. But that's the MS when it comes to the way Malchus based of it works. It works in a, in a system of revelation and concealment. You have that. Because the 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 um, uh, Malchus based David is compared to the moon, the moon waxes and wanes. It's in the sky, it's bright, and then it begins its decline. So we have it says in the Zayar that uh, from Avram Avinu until David the Melech, that was the beginning of the establishment of Hashem's kingdom. But it took fifteen generations until it was Kaimasi Arabishlamus, until the moon was in its fullest, and then it had its decline. 
and it disappeared. And we went into a bit of the gullus, into a very dark exile for 2,000 years. But we are promised that we, the Jewish people, are going to be renewed in this world, and our malchus is going to be renewed in this world. And it's compared to Chidush Halavana, which comes back after its concealment. So that's cosmic in the bigger picture, but it is also regarding the actual um, manifestation of Moshiach's Malchus, it also goes through revelation, concealment, and revelation. Like we know what the Medrash tells us in the Pasuk, that the king is, that the my beloved Hashem and the Redeemer is compared to a tzvi, to a deer. Ma tzvi, just like a deer, just like a deer, you're watching a deer, or you're, you're somewhere and you see suddenly a deer piping out of the bushes, you see the deer, you, see, you get excited about it, and then suddenly, because the deer is so quick, it disappears from view, you don't see it, but then the very same deer pipes up Another, like an hour later, you see him somewhere like coming out in the bushes again. So it says that's the way it's going to be with was with, with Goyal Rishon, the first redeemer with Moshe Rabbeinu, and so it is going to be with Goyal Achan. He will be revealed, concealed, and then re, um, um, revealed again. And it could be, and it makes sense to say, that just like it is in the redeemer himself, in the Melech himself, that the Melech is here concealed and then revealed again. The same is on the Am's end, on the people's end, that they identify as his people also in a state of revelation, concealment, and revelation. Now, during the time of concealment doesn't mean they disassociate Chas Rishon from him, but this Indian, that he's their Melech, he's their king, and he's their redeemer, that Indian can go in Chas Rishon into a state of concealment, and that's what we saw happen for 30 years. The darkness that came upon the world, the darkness that came upon us Hasidim, the darkness that happened kind of had suppressed this MS, this truth. But it has to again reveal itself. Something will always come back and re, 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 resurge, will resurface when it is true, when it is an MS. That's the deeper meaning of MS Meyeret Titzmach. The truth, even if you bury it in the ground, and you, you, you literally, and you bury it, and you put a lots of heaps of sand on top of it, because it's true, eventually it's going to sprout forth. No one will ever deny those moments when we watch the Rebbe coming out on the porch. We watch the times when the entire Chabad sang with all their heart and souls, and when Makabal the Malchus of the Rebbe in such a clear way, and our Rebbe stood there. No one can deny the amazing uh, that Rebbe was giving us before Chazai and others, such powerful, powerful sikhs telling us again and again and again that we're mamash at the threshold and that our avoida now needs to be the avoida of evictuous of the KM as David Malcolm. Yet, Dafkaza, you know, there's a famous letter from the Frida Gedebbe where the Frida Gedebbe says that the Abishta could have had it much easier, but the Abishta makes a Dafka hard for himself. Everything that has to be realized in this world that is godly, it is Dafka challenged with incredible challenges. The Frida gets a, it's a beautiful letter. It has, I think, like 15 things the Frida Gedebbe said the Abishta could have made, given us the Torah in heaven. It would have been far more successful. He chose to give it Dafka on earth. The Abishta could have put us into very Ada Legufim. He gave us Dafka very coarse Gufim. The Abishta could have made that from when we were born, we right away have our Nefesh of the Kiss. The Abishta no, made the Nefesh of Bahamas preceded. The Abishta could have made that Chassidish family should all be born with the best material, meaning the most Adels to Gufim, and so on. The Abishta made that Dafka, we have coarse bodies, and Dafka, we have challenges, and Dafka, it's hard with our children, and so on. Why? Because Dafka despite all the cards stacked against it, despite all the hardships, since it's MS and it's true, the truth will come out. That's the whole concept of Dira B'tachlanim. The Ebersh also dims, makes it darker and darker and darker, too, as the Alter Rebbe calls it, and Dafka, in that darkness, the ultimate MS of the Ebersh, there sprouts forth. And so it is with the final MS of Mashiach Tzadkenu. Yesterday I was by a, a, a dinner and Bashkocha Prata, someone sat down next to me and he told me something really amazing. He says that it says in, 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 in he said this from the name of a Litzvisha rabbi, he's a, that, that he heard him speak and the guy, the person, the Zerav was saying that Mashiach is Mamish here and he was saying that Mashiach comes at a time when we kind of feel so hopeless, when there's no leadership, when we feel like kind of, and this, this Litzvisha Rav said 30 years ago there was such a sense that Mashiach is coming. It's interesting, un, not necessarily be known to him or subconsciously, that's actually the time when the Rebbe was cocking a Mashiach and making such a Mashiach tumult. This is what the rabbi said 30 years ago with the fall of communism. The Mashiach was so palpable. And then we went into a time of darkness of Shomash Tzadis. A remez to this idea that Mashiach comes through 
in a time of hopelessness and a time when it's so hard, he brought from the first, one of the main stories in the title where it's talking about the birthing of Mashiach. And when is that? The story of Yehuda and, and uh, um, Tamar, right? And they're giving birth in their marriage, they give birth to Perach, Peretz, and that's the and that's the lineage of David Malka Mashiach of Mashiach. But as the story begins, there is a marriage that takes place before that. Yehuda marries Batshua, well, obviously, and, and then they take Tamar as a daughter-in-law and whatever. So over there it says when Sheila is born, the third son, it says, Vehi Bahaya, something like that, or that she was in, in Ksiv, in a place, a town in Eretz Yisrael that's called Ksiv. And in that town was at the time when they were born. So this rabbi said, the word ksiv means hopeless. That's the meaning. Like we say, kala adam koizev. When you feel cheated, when you feel like, like that it's not it's, that something that you know was supposed to happen, and you were hoping for something, and the hopes were dashed. That's called a state of of koizev. You feel like 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 a certain what was supposed to happen didn't happen. You feel a letdown. So he says that Mashiach comes. That's why it says the word Biksiv, When do you have the birth of Mashiach? Dafka, when we reach that point of Ksiv, we reach such a strong sense of hopelessness. And then the rabbi went on to say something that Ksiv is the word Chav Zayin Yudbeiz. And he said some kind of a Torah that he said. But this fellow that was there um, told me that he went over to the rabbi and he said, you have no idea what you just said. You said something really, really, you just explained to me, Chav Zayin Adar, you know, we Lubavitch suffered two horrors in Chav Zayin Adar, two consecutive ones. It was the Rebbe's first stroke and the Rebbe's second stroke. And what did that do to us? It gave, that's the, that was the root of all the sense of Kaizev. We were given promises. We were told Basi Ligani. We were told Mashiach is coming. We were told that Ot Ot Mashiach. We were told all the promises. And at that very moment, Trach, we had one Chavzai and other. We had another Chavzai and other. So many painful events. And that made us, why are people burnt out? Why are people tired when you talk to them about this? And when you, you mention Kabbalah Samachos that happened 30 years ago, people say, Oi, you know, they feel like it was, they didn't understand that Rebbe said, but that it didn't happen. So we have to go on and go to something else. That's hard. And you don't blame anybody. I also felt that way. We all feel that way at certain times. And that's the idea of Kizev, the Ksiv. Now, Chav Zayin Yud Beis, Yud Beis is the 12th month. So Chav Zayin represents Chav Zayin, the 27th day of the 12th month. And if you want a rem is even stronger, it's Bechsev. It says the Pasuk, and you can read it, Beis Chav Zayin Yud Beis, two times, because we had Chav Zayin once and Chav Zayin other a second time, which brought us to a state of hope hopelessness. But that itself is the way Malchus based David works. It works at a point when you reach a point of ayin, a point of nothingness, a point of frustration, a point of darkness, a point of almost giving up and tough at that moment. Bang! It comes back in full force. Now we're living in a most amazing, amazing opportunity right now because um, there has been a big us, The chlal in the world, after what we've gone through in the last... In the last Shemitah, really, we're watching unprecedented events, events after event, and they're all surprises. The thing that the common denominator between everything that has happened, let's talk in the last two years, when, when we're talking about COVID, um, we're talking about um, Maron, we're talking about Surfside, Rahman al -Atzlan. we talk about um, and the, and the Ukrainian war, and the, the reawakening of, of terrorism in Eretz Yisrael by you know, even like a new thing, like Israeli Arabs, which were kind of till now were more or less behaving. And now like these like, terrible things that we, we've, we've been through. And, but in addition to that, there were also some amazing, amazing developments that are like, it's beyond like when we had earlier also started at the Shemitah, when we had the announcement in Yerushalayim, we had Rubashkin Fried and the joy that came along with that. We had, and the most amazing thing that people don't have the, 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 the incredible aspect of it is when we had the Abraham Accords, when you had, and still effective now, even Edrogen, whatever his name is, they're from Turkey, is now becoming friends with, with Israel. Um, um, they're, they're from nation after nation in the Arab world. It's so crazy that one of the most famous popular Halamoy trips is Dubai. Who would have thought that? 
The thing about all these events, everything, the good and the not so good, is that all of these came in a way that we were totally unexpected. They all hit us in the gut. And that's an indication that they're coming mo mila, and the world is shaking up and the world is ready for something new. So because of all these events and because of all these inyanim cracks in the klipa that has been, or the the this this darkness that was sitting on our hearts is breaking open. And we're finding that people are far more receptive to the message of truth, which is what the Rebbe told us. That the Melech HaMashiach, Melech HaMashiach is not only the Metzius of Melech HaMashiach is here already, but Melech HaMashiach is already here. The Giloi, his galos, we're already at the table with the Shoyer Abar and the Leviyos. And as the Rebbe said to Rebbe Mordech, the Mashiach is already here. We just have to pull him into our house. All these truths are now suddenly resonating again in the hearts that have been under the spell of Ksiv, under this, this under this, um, um, in, in a burnt out stage, the juices are beginning to flow. We are now we have organized a campaign of Kabbalah Samalchus. And for the first time, when I was beginning to organize it, I was excited and said, you know what? We're just going to take this to the masses. I got very strong answers from the Rebbe that it should not be a, a, a campaign that, that goes around the leadership in Lubavitch. It should work dafka with the entire leadership. And the first time we reached out to Rabbanim all across the aisle. At this point, we have already like 36 signatures of respectable, the entire Vada Rabbanu Chabad and Eretz Yisrael. And we're not talking about people that you would have expected would sign this. People that, it's basically a, 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 a Ksavis Kashrus, a write, a, a, a document, just like we gave to the Rebbe in Tavshin Yud Aleph when we asked him to be our Rebbe. We declared that we will give Zich over to him. We're giving ourselves over. This is a Ksavis Kashrus. It's a powerful cry of Ad Masai. We are saying the Rebbe, we are backing him. You are a Melech and we're your people. And it's now it has been endorsed by all these Rabbanim and more of them are joining. And everybody that's over here, not only should you sign, even if you signed things like this before, you should sign it again and you should encourage others to sign it and send it. You know, you know, this campaign is going to have like charity teams where people get people to give money instead of giving money. We're asking people to sign on the dotted line. Put your signature to the Rebbe saying, Rebbe. I am one of your am, ain melech b'loy am. We are here. We're your people. You be our king. We are your subjects. And that's it. And once the Rebbe has the backing of the Am, then it's it's all done. Then 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 we're ready. Then we're ready to go. We're ready to march and build the base on Migdash. And we're going to see the ultimate is Galos of godliness, holiness, and the Eberster's kingship, and the kingship, which is one with the kingship of Melech HaMashiach, and every single person who is participating in this and in spreading it will forever, ever, ever be able to say and feel and connect that I took part in the ultimate and complete coronation, doing the last and final act that was necessary to, to eliminate all darkness and bring in the reign of holiness and ultimate truth in the world, realizing what we've been doing from the beginning of time. I was part of what's called in the Mesech to Shabbos, Maka Bepatish, the one who does the final bang. We were all the participants in it. So let's do it. Let's do it with simcha. Let's do it with joy. Let's do whatever we can to get it out everywhere and bring about the complete renaissance of Malchus based David and let it be now.